Dylan's feature. Um, and in the meantime, um, I'm just going to go ahead and just do a very quick intro um, of myself and outside for those of you that are new to the company who aren't members yet. Um, we are, um, we offer beautiful places to stay um, designed for remote workers. Um, so we have over 40 locations across the world. Um, and once you become a member, you can choose the option that works best for you. Um, so if you're looking for a private room or a studio or apartment, you can look at our locations and see what's available there. Um, becoming a member, um, an outside member also gives you access to the member hub, which is our online community. Um, it's the home of all our deals, our perks, our online events, um, and our trip planning features as well. Um, our monthly events program is something that I help to coordinate. Um, I'm also the community manager for the LA spaces, um, which is where I've met many of our lovely panelists today. Um, and our monthly event program um, ranges for everything from panel discussions like this one to member AMAs, um, new member welcomes that we do every month, um, and lots of other stuff. If you're interested in anything outside related and our membership um, in, in, in speaking um, with us at an event, um, please do get in touch. I'll put my contact details in the chat box soon. Um, thank you so much to our panelists today. I'm super excited about this event. Um, I've done a lot of female so, solo travel in my life and I would say that I credit a lot of my life where I am who I am um, to those experiences um, so I'm really excited to hear from Priya from Christina and from Claire about their experiences um, why they travel solo how they do it um, to provide guidance and inspiration um, to many of you that are hoping to do the same um, so I can't thank you all enough for being with us today um, and to all of you for attending um, I'm going to pass on now to the panel who are going to do some intros themselves um, and then we'll get started um, with the rest of the presentation if you have any questions um, throughout the event please drop them in the chat box or in the Q&A box um, we'll answer most of them at the end but if anything's pressing um, drop it in there and I'll keep an eye on it um, again, thank you so much. Um, I'm going to pass over now to the panellists um, who are going to do their intros. Christina, did you want to get started? Um, and then we'll go to Claire and then to Priya. Yes, of course. Um, and just want to preempt this by saying, I'm sorry if there's any noise feedback coming in. I'm outside at a coffee shop and I have Chris on my Zoom hoping to cut out most of the background noise. Um, let me know if it becomes unbearable. Um, so I'm Christina. Uh, I was born and raised in Denver. Um, that's actually where I am currently. And uh, about a year and a half ago, I started nomading full time uh, and put my house up for rent. And literally like sold, gave everything away or put it in storage and uh, started nomading full time. Um, I would say that like I tend to do half and half as far as half nomading with friends or groups and half solo travel. Um, and I've actually been working full time now for about, I think about five years. So um, it's not until last summer slash late spring that I started nomading, but I've been working remotely even pre COVID. Um, so I think becoming a nomad was kind of a little bit of a natural continuation um, considering that I already love to travel. Um, and yeah, so I, I worked for a tech company, uh, a series B tech company, kind of uh, mid-stage uh, in finance. So I'm an FP&A manager doing all things forecasting, planning and analysis, investor reporting, board reporting, things of that nature. Um, and yeah, just travel when I can uh, and love to explore new places, new coffee shops, et cetera. Uh, and really excited to chat about some of these uh, really good questions we have on some of these slides, because I think this is like a lot of the questions and conversation points that come up in normal conversations when I meet other nomads and other female travelers. So excited to get to know you. Thank you so much, Christina. Awesome, would you like me to jump in? Yeah, go for it. Yeah, um, it's so good to uh, hear from you, Christina. Uh, that sounds amazing. Um, so my name's Claire, I'm um, Australian and have been, um, I'm, funnily enough, I don't think Nav, you know this, but I'm in Marrakesh in outside, in the, in the outside Marrakesh, yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah, so which was unplanned. So I was in London, um, I was in LA earlier this year at the beautiful West Hollywood um, outside. Um, place and then I went to London and I was there for a little bit planning to be there for some time but uh, 
crazy thing happened where suddenly my accommodation was cancelled, my long-term accommodation. And I was like, what am I going to do? Because um, it's not ready till November. And so um, Port Portugal has been on my mind with Outside. And that was sort of a place that I wanted to go, but it was quite booked out. So I thought I looked at Marrakesh and I, I've actually wanted to be to visit Marrakesh since I was about 16. Um, and I thought, well, let's go and do that. So I'm here. I've been here for a week or so and I'll be here for about two months. Um, and it's amazing. So anyone wondering about uh, whether this would be a good move, uh, it's just just to die for. Um, so I'm here. Yeah, amazing. In the yeah. Program. I'm here. Um, so I run, I'm the co-founder of a company called The Future of Flourishing, where uh, we're um, here to try and transform human wellness through science-backed immersive learning experiences. Um, so some of that at the moment is like video training, but in the future it will be more VR, AR, um, metaverse, metaverse based stuff. But right now, right now it's sort of a, a video training experience. Um, I'm really, really, I'm, I'm two things. I'm a realist who's really concerned with mental health right here, right now. And I'm a futurist who can see um, the potential of human potential. And so I'm really excited by that. So a lot of my work and research is, is based on that. Um, ultimately it comes down for me to human connection and community um, this is why this is quite exciting I really look forward to um, getting to know many of you here on the call uh, I think that the way we change things in our own lives and um, in other people's lives is through deep connection and that can come about in many different forms um, so yeah I'm uh, that, that's me I'm, I, I've been really um, blown away by the outside experience. Um, meeting Nav was amazing in, um, in LA and I don't know, there's something special about this kind of space that is being created for people that are nomading. I mean, I planned to do this just before the pandemic. I packed up my entire life to move to New York March 2020. Uh, and then the world's changed and I ended up locked down and, and stuck in Perth, Western Australia for two years, which is one of the, I don't know, Australia was pretty strict with the lockdown stuff, but, but Western Australia in particular, if you left, you couldn't come home. Um, even if someone died in your family, you know, people weren't able to come home for funerals and that kind of thing. So at the time I had a dog, a pug, um, and so it wasn't an option for me to leave because you couldn't come home. So I stayed uh, through that pandemic, those two years in a, in a WA Perth. And just uh, late last year, my dog died, you know, naturally she was, she was ready to go and the, the borders opened. And now I've just been um, traveling the world ever since. So uh, not knowing what's gonna happen next. I never thought I'd be in Marrakesh right here, right now having this, this uh, chat with all of you. So, so that's me, I'll, I'll leave it there. And I look forward to a conversation that opens up the rest of the session. Yeah. I didn't realize that you were in Marrakesh. I have a friend, uh, Bonnie, who has actually just messaged me on WhatsApp. I guess she's uh, in this, uh, <laughs> I think, as a participant here today. Hey, Bonnie. Um, and I think Bonnie, last time I checked, or last time I heard, is going to Marrakesh as well. So Amazing. if you're staying there for two months uh, in the outside, you guys will probably uh, bump into each oh, other. <laughs> fantastic. I can't wait to meet you, Bonnie. <laughs> Thank you so much, Claire. Yeah, sorry. Um, thanks so much, Claire. That was beautiful. Um, I'm sure a lot of us um, solo female travelers can relate to a lot of that, um, myself included. Um, okay, so my name is Priya um, and where I'm from. So I was born in India, but grew up in New Jersey in the United States. I used to live in the Bay Area. Um, so that was uh, between 2016 and 2020. Um, and, uh, and then I moved back home to be with family. Um, and I was just kind of in a limbo phase. My job was remote. Um, you know, obviously being in the Bay, I uh, found my way into the tech industry. Um, and yeah, I've been nomading for uh, a year and nine months now. I've been to, um, several different countries and all of them have been so special, um, and now I'm just sort of um, like re-exploring the New York area. I'll be at Outsite Brooklyn um, in a couple of weeks. I'm really excited to see that one. And what I do for work, so as I mentioned, um, I'm in tech. Um, I work for a company called Doximity. 
Um, they went public last year. I, I joined uh, while it was still pre-IPO, um, and it was um, it's it's my favorite job that I've ever had. It's an amazing company. The people are kind. Um, the work is challenging. Um, I've loved it so much, um, and I am on their data science and analytics team. So I'm basically. Um, you know, helping derive insights to support our sales and marketing. And I also do um, product analytics. Um, I find that really rewarding because I'm a very like, um, you know, I'm very analytical, like I'm a problem solving kind of person. My background was in mathematics. Um, so obviously a career in data analytics just made sense. Um, but, you know, um, as I mentioned in my bio, I have this other part of me that um, just, you know, loves people. Um, I love the world. I love to read. Um, I'm also a writer and I hope to publish my work someday. Um, I spent a lot of my 20s exploring my spirituality in the Bay Area. Um, specifically Indian spirituality and philosophy. And um, that's been extremely rewarding. I feel like that has really informed my experience of solo travel, like just, you know, developing this love for the world, um, developing a love for people, like just really trying to um, understand what is the human experience? Like, what are all of our stories? What are all of these different places? Um, and being from India, um, obviously, you know, my, my, neither of my parents had um, like a very affluent upbringing. And I, I think about that every day, like, wow, my life is so different from what my ancestors had. Um, and like, this is such a blessing that I, you know, I get to work remotely and I get to travel. Um, and that's something I think about all the time. Um, so what my experience has been like, uh, I touched on that a little bit. So yeah, I, I love meeting new people. Um, I, I, you know, I've, I've made some like beautiful friendships while traveling. Um, I, you know, um, I, I talked a little bit about my spirituality. Like I typically meet people who are very spiritual um, and it's, you know, different types of spirituality. Like myself, I'm, you know, more into like meditation um, stuff that's very similar to Buddhism, but um, I meet people who um, like come from like all different um, spiritual paths. Um, and I think that, you know, spiritual or not, like people are just very open. People are just like very much on like a path towards growth and, and discovering themselves. Um, and that's one of the things I love the most. It's um, it's very like affirming of uh, your own humanity, like just going out and um, seeing um, what travel can do for you, especially as a woman, you know, especially for anyone from any um, marginalized background. Um, obviously, it's also very um, empowering, um, as uh, I know a lot of you will agree with, um, just knowing that you can go out there and um, sort of create your own experience. Um, I love that so much. Thank you so much, Priya, Christina, Claire. Um, so much of what you said, it definitely resonates with me. Um, and, I, and I think that, um, you know, having having women talking on, on, on how they travel in a way that they can feel safe and can feel comfortable and build community is just so important and I think so helpful um, to other women who are looking to do the same. Um, so with that in mind, um, we're gonna get started um, on some of the presentation. Um, and we're gonna start off, um, and, I, and, you, and, and some, you've covered some of this in, in your intros, um, but kind of the inspiration behind traveling solo and why you do it. Um, so if you guys want to speak to what inspired you to travel solo and what you think some of the benefits are, um, and if you ever travel with others and, and what the sort of comparison is there. Um, I can go first. So I think what originally inspired, inspired me to travel, um, I started, so I've, I've been to a lot of countries, I would say over my life. I come from a bit of a international family in the sense that my dad was born and raised in Nigeria. And so I essentially all of my family on my dad's side is either in between London or Nigeria still. Um, and my mom was, came from a family that like all of the women in her family traveled to the world. I have these really cool pictures of my grandma in like the sixties and all these cool countries. Um, so I would say that I grew up in a, a family that, that, uh, encouraged that from a young age. And my first time in Europe, I was 16 and um, kind of just went traveling to different countries with my mom pretty frequently growing up. Um, but I think what inspired me to travel solo was, I think what was driving me was this feeling of like really wanting to get out of my bubble and really wanting to get out of the American bubble. Um, and I think if you grow up in any sort of kind of 
multicultural or international family, you already have a little bit of a sense of that. But I have, I, and that drive has only become stronger as time has gone on. Uh, even still now, I kind of am perpetually driven by this desire to get outside of the bubble that I'm in. And so I think that's what drove me to start traveling solo first. Um, and so I started traveling solo even before I started uh, nomading. Um, and, you know, I think when I think of the benefits of traveling solo, um, I really feel like it feels a little bit more, um, feels a little bit more impactful to me, like on a spiritual level, but just like a personal and mental level. It just feels like I grow more from solo traveling versus traveling with others. So as I mentioned previously, I kind of have like a, there's like a, I would say a 50, 50 breakdown for me as far as traveling solo or traveling with people in like chapters with um, nomad groups and things of that nature. Um, and I just find that I'm more, I don't know, I, I walk away feeling like I, I sometimes grew a little bit more as a person when I do travel solo. I think part of it, in my opinion, and would love to hear what everybody else thinks, if you guys have an opinion on this, is um, I think when you, when I'm traveling with a group, chances are I don't get outside of that group as much to like meet you know, locals who lived or grew up there or um, meet expats who actually live there. I just don't get outside of my group as much as when I'm traveling solo. I just, when I'm traveling solo, I have these serendipitous experiences where like, uh, you know, like a restaurant owner will invite me to like stay and have dinner with him and his friends and like this whole group of great friends, which actually happened to me in Paris. Um, uh, uh, and, and, you know, ate dinner there all night and just these wonderful serendipitous experiences that I find I, I kind of stumble into way more often when I'm traveling by myself than when I'm traveling with the group. Um, not to say that there's kind of one mode that I like over the other as far as traveling by myself or traveling with a group. I think what I found is I'm personally really happy when there's a balance. Like if I've been traveling with a group or with different groups on and off for a couple months, I will oftentimes be like, now I feel like I need to travel by myself and get some of that time by myself. And it just, it puts, I, I feel like I'm in a different headspace and I get different things out of it, if that makes sense. Yeah, I can, um, oh, sorry. Yeah, you go, you go. Okay. Yeah, um, yeah, I can touch on that a little bit, actually. So um, what you were saying about groups, um, yeah, totally. Um, I, I feel the exact same way um, where uh, like even even outside of travel, like um, I'm a very independent person. I'm very one on one. Most of my friendships are very one on one. Um, so like I I'm not big on like taking trips with groups of people. However, I do love the idea of like staying at an outside with other independent travelers and meeting others like myself. Um, I find that so much fun. Um, so yeah, I can take some of these questions as well. So what inspired me to want to travel solo? Um, I just wanted to see the world. Um, I was feeling very, um, you know, I, I lived in the Bay for four and a half years and it just got to a point where I was like, it is the same thing every day. I just, I don't think I'm the kind of person that can live in one place. Um, this is boring. <laughs> um, so actually it, it got to a point of frustration for me during the pandemic where I was like, I, I absolutely cannot do this anymore. Um, I didn't really know other digital nomads though. Um, but um, I decided to just like get up and travel, take my laptop. And um, one of my old yoga teachers from San Francisco was having a yoga retreat in Puerto Escondido in Oaxaca. Um, and I booked that like six months ahead of time. I was like, I'm gonna do this. I'm just gonna see what happens. Um, and, uh, you know, originally the trip was only supposed to be um, two to three weeks because um, I was in a relationship at that time. But um, while I was there, um, the relationship ended. Um, and of course, I had a lot of feelings I needed to process. And I was like, I'm just not ready to go home. And it was all, you know, um, you know, to use uh, Christina's word serendipitous, like I just met the most amazing people, like made new friends right away, was very encouraged by my yoga, ret uh, yoga retreat teacher. Um, 
And uh, I just stayed like two to three weeks, turned into two months in Puerto Escondido. I, I got the most like beautiful studio there in a really quiet and safe part of town by the beach. Um, and uh, just like, you know, the experiences I had there, like I will carry with me forever. It just felt like the universe was looking out for me um, while I was like processing the feelings from this breakup. Um, and it was just easy, you know, um, you know, to just like sit there with my laptop and work by the beach. Um, we didn't have great internet there. So I would have to um, like get up every day early to run to the one co-working cafe next to Selena to make sure I got decent internet because at the time there just wasn't good internet anywhere else. Um, so yeah, that was um, how I got into it. And after that, I just kept going. I was like, I don't want to live anywhere. I'm just going to park my stuff at my parents' house and keep doing this. Um, and uh, so what, what are some of the benefits of traveling solo? Um, you will learn so much about what you're capable of. Um, and I'll be like pretty candid here about how I was when I was younger. I was much more afraid um, of like doing things by myself. Like I didn't like understand the concept of like just going out and doing something because you wanted to. Like I thought you had to have like company or whatever. Um, but uh, I had a friend who was like, no, if you want to go do something, just do it. And it took me a while for me to actually put that into practice and get comfortable with it. Um, but uh, yeah, you have this feeling of like, okay, I don't have to wait for someone um, to make a plan with them. Like I can just like get up and do this alone. Um, and I know that like, you know, the world has my back. Like I'm, I'm very optimistic about it. I'm very optimistic about the people that I meet. That's not to say that you, you shouldn't be discerning. Like there's a he healthy level of discernment that's needed, but um, like, you know, also like um, Christina talked about, like you will like sort of find this grace in the people that you meet. Like people are looking out for you, um, are like, you know, very open, welcoming, very loving. Um, I think the best part is that I just find some form of love, friendship, affection everywhere I go. Um, and that's, uh, you know, I, I can't think of anything more affirming than that about traveling. Um, and do I travel with others? Um, occasionally, like sometimes I'll take a friend along. Um, and, uh, you know, that can be really nice. Um, this last, um, not the last, but like the one before that, the trip before that, all of June, I was in Norway, um, which is kind of an unusual digital nomad spot. Um, but there's a spot called Lofoten up in the north um, where there are a lot of surfers and digital nomads. Um, and my friend Anna, who is also an outside member and also a female solo traveler, um, she picked that spot because she has some uh, ties to Norway. She invited me. So we were kind of two female um, solo travelers together. Um, but what was really nice was while we were like living together um, and we have like a really like wonderful like soul friendship, um, we still did things alone a lot of the time. I would do um, midnight sun hikes alone um, like pretty much every day. Like she would go on her own midnight sun hikes. Um, and that then sounds amazing. That sounds so amazing. A midnight sun hike. Yeah, when you said that, I'm like, I'm in. I want to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's amazing. Um, so, uh, you know, and when we spent time together, you know, we would like meet other nomads together, which was really nice. Thing is, you will always meet other nomads and you will always like find this like quality of independence in everyone. And um, it's really nice when like you have a group, like a community of those who know like how to travel by themselves, like that creates something really beautiful. I just want to touch on something, Priya, that you just said. Uh, sorry, then you can uh, pipe in, Claire. Um, I just, uh, I think you said uh, in the beginning of your response to this slide that you, I think you said that you're not, you aren't typically the type of person who, um, you know, likes to hang out in big groups of people, I think you said. Um, I actually was the same way growing up and as a child and as it, like in my adolescence, I think I got really overstimulated by being in groups. And I have to say, I'm really glad that I've gone on several group trips at this point, because I think it's really changed my bound, my social boundaries. And I, I have a lot less kind of, of that like overstimulated effect. So I guess my point is like, you know, if you are just like, if I had to, 
you know, give some advice or say some words to my previous self. If you are, um, if you are that way, or if you have some of those feelings like social anxiety or just this like feeling of overwhelmedness, um, those are still really positive experiences to get you out of your bubble. And they can be positive experiences to get you out of your bubble to go explore new places and to kind of like flex your social boundaries and your social muscles. Because I think of myself now and I'm much, I've just changed socially as a person, I think for the better. Um, but then on the flip side, like just as you mentioned, Priya, there's, um, I think there's, you, life will always give you something when you travel solo. And I think that's such a beautiful gift. I have learned time and time and time again, whether I'm reeling from a breakup, whether I'm feeling lonely, whether I feel like I just need to get the heck out of town or wherever I am, um, whenever I go travel solo, like I literally feel like without question, the universe always gives me something that I needed or that I didn't even know I needed, whether it's friends, whether it's meeting an interesting guy that I start dating or just having these like really great experiences that gives my soul something that I need. Um, I always find that, like I always find synchronicities and love and um, really interesting people that I connect with that I want to keep connecting with, even if I only see them once a year. So I think that's the beautiful thing about solo travel, but I think it just speaks about the benefits of different types of travel and how like group travel can, can expand you socially, like expand your social muscles. Um, but like, yeah, yeah. Solo travel, I think just gives you so many gifts. I think, I think there's a really interesting thread that's coming through here around serendipity and, um, that's a word that to me has been really important for, you know, since I was really young. Um, and it, I really, really understood what this concept of serendipity is, but as I become, as I research and do this work that I do, it's, it's you know, it's, it's not that magical. It's, uh, it, it, it happens because you're looking for certain things. It's pattern recognition in the brain. And as you, you know, sort of embark upon a, a mission such as solo travel, you're highly tuned to noticing things that are important to you. And I, so, you know, what inspired me to solo travel? I, I, I didn't plan it. Like I'm, I'm actually in my early forties and this is something I would have loved to have done in my twenties or thirties, but I was doing other things. I was being married and I was like, you know, doing all, all the things that you do um, as an Australian, you know, and it's only now that, also post pandemic that I have the opportunity to do this um, and it's completely unplanned and it's really interesting because um, I like I literally two weeks ago was in London and not, had no expectation or desire of, you know, um, to be in Marrakesh it's just and then now I'm here and then what do you look for then in that learning experience and like I'm still working and I'm, I'm, I'm doing a doctoral thesis so I'm busy I've got lots a lot of, a lot of responsibilities and at the same time, I'm soaking up and experiencing this whole new culture um, with people that, you know, people, you know, there's, there's four or five people here because it's brand new. I think that the outside Marrakesh, so there's not a lot of people here. And so the people that are here are, we're like, wow, we're here, you know, like for the very first time together in this moment. Um, and we're connecting deeply around that. And it's special. And it's just um, so unexpected. And I think that's what personally why I seek out moments like this or this this travel in particular, solo travel. For me, what that gives me is this um, <clears throat> connection to flow. So the, the being in the in the moment, being in the zone. <clears throat> and like I, this is what I study. I study the science of what's happening in your brain when you're in flow. And um, when I'm traveling like this, the novelty. Um, the unexpectedness, the uh, sort of complexity that shows up day to day keeps me very present. <clears throat> and it's it's a beautiful feeling. So it's like it's being present and growing at the same time in ways that you'd never expect. Um, I think the benefits of being solo are really interesting. I mean, for me, the last year or two, I mean, through the pandemic and then the last year of traveling, it's just like this radical self-awareness. So getting to know myself on a level in a way that I never have. I've been that person that's always been in relationships and um, my, my last relationship ended just 
like late 2019. Um, and then we went into this, this crazy world that we've been in for the last two years. And, um, and I've consciously stayed st single for two years to really try and get to know myself um, and to, to figure out what it is that I want to give to a relationship. So tr traveling on top of that in the last, since January sort of this year, um, it's been a really interesting process. And I think it's just like the gift is, or the benefit for me right now is this radical self-awareness. Um, and then bringing others in, it's so interesting thinking, uh, listening to both Priya and Christina, like um, bringing others into the experience. I yearn for that all the time. Like I often just have this feeling of, I want, I want to invite people to experience what I'm experiencing. I've got a lot of friends around the world that, I'm just like, please get on a plane and just spend a weekend here in Riyadh in Marrakesh or something. Um, I had this deep yearning to share it, um, but I haven't done that yet. So I, I guess in the future, this way of living, this way of being might be something that I get to share, um, especially when, you know, I'm certainly looking forward to another relationship at the right time. But, um, and, and that, would, that would be a different experience altogether. Um, but it's nice. I mean, I'm a bit of a, um, I like my own company. I'm not that one that loves to go on the, you know, out in groups or do things, um, like that so much, but this is what I love about the outside experiences. You can, you can choose when you're ready and feeling like being around others, there's that option. And when you just want to be by yourself and in your own company, there's that option too. And I, I really like that. And I think it's really healthy. And um, that's that's what's been so attractive to me um, in America and now in North Africa and hopefully in Europe, um, engaging in outside, engaging in this kind of uh, this kind of opportunity. So I'll leave it there. And maybe you can hear the calls to prayer in the background. I don't know, but <laughs> yeah. Just, yeah, I can actually. It yeah, amazing. they just began and they're so beautiful. beautiful. <laughs> yeah. Um, thank you so much, um, all three of you. Um, I think, you know, some of the common themes that I'm hearing coming through and certainly from my experience is just like an openness that solo travel gives you, um, an openness to the world, an openness of saying yes to things and, and just generally putting yourself outside of your comfort zone that allows you to grow um, and see the world in different ways. Um, and I think it's uh, that's kind of the themes and, and the feelings that I get around solo travel um, whenever I do it. And it's been a while for me, um, but I'm looking forward to at some point being able to resume. Um, some of the other things I wanted to discuss um, is around how we plan our trips, um, particularly as a woman, particularly traveling alone. Um, the things that you consider, the how you choose your destinations. Um, so you don't need to answer all of these questions, um, but just the ones that speak most most to you. Um, but yeah, a general theme around how you choose them, um, the things that you consider, um, and what, what the places that you think are best to travel solo um, as a woman, um, things around safety. Um, and if you have any yeah. tips to share around that, that would be helpful as well. Nava, I'm just gonna quickly flag, I was looking at the Q&A box and Victoria posted a question, which I think actually dovetails well into this slide. Um, she said, what's one thing you thought would be a concern or worry about uh, or worry about while traveling solo, but ended up not being a big deal? Um, I do think that dovetails nicely into trip planning. Um, I think I have become less freaked out over time if I go back to my prior self right before I started solo traveling to now about safety. I will caveat that by saying I'm always going to be skeptical of my environment. I think you kind of just have to do that as a woman. But I've started to realize I think there's a lot more goodness in the world than we give the world credit for. Um, I'm not advocating for anyone to just go out into the world naively, but I'm I don't yes, like I I will I'll do a little bit of research on the destination I'm going to make sure I'm staying in an okay place in an okay neighborhood, read reviews of the area, et cetera. But like besides those kind of foundational pieces that you have to be aware of, I really don't, I, I, I'm not as concerned. I think I just have a different perspective on the world um, that's a little bit more positive at this point. Um, so that's that. I think in general, my, I'll kind of reply generally to the trip planning aspect here on this slide. 
Um, my general approach is um, I'm starting to try to plan more in advance. Um, I think anyone who I've traveled with in the past, Bonnie, who's on this, uh, this, who's one of the participants here, I've been on a couple trips with her over the last year and a half that I've been nomading. Um, you know, so I, she'll probably know as well that like sometimes things come up that are last minute ideas that other friends are doing that you'll want to join. And so I think over the last year and a half, my, my trip planning has been a little bit hectic and a little bit spontaneous, you know, spontaneous, which I think is great sometimes, but sometimes it can be a little bit too spontaneous. So I'm now gearing myself to be a little bit more planning ahead and a little bit more organized about where I'm going. Um, I have spent the last year and a half kind of doing max one month in a place, but more often than not, like sometimes two to three weeks in a place sometimes if I'm not doing a month long trip with a group. And I find that to be stressful for like my work life and also just stressful for me as a person. I'm somebody who's like very grounded in routines and I've learned about myself that I just can't do that anymore. Um, so I, uh, I think going forward, I'm gonna do it a little bit differently than I have in the past where I would like to stay places uh, you know, at least one month, if not two months, or some places three months visa, you know, visa regulations allowing. Um, and also, I think I've also realized I'm not going to be the person who's going to stay three months in a city where there's not a lot of infrastructure. Because again, I'm super grounded by my routine, um, like workout, working out in my fitness is important to me, not just physically, but my mental health. Um, and just being able to like go out to a coffee shop and, or like a co-working space for, for the day, stuff like that. Like the, the place, the, the city I'm going to, the country I'm going to, I think as a bare minimum has to have some of those elements. Um, so those are the types of places I'm looking to going forward for the more off the grid places. Um, I'm starting to think about doing those as actual, uh, kind of like trekking vacations. I just can't. I think where I am in my work life, I cannot, I cannot manage going to those places as a digital nomad anymore. I work in finance and I cannot afford to not have stable internet, which is one of the reasons why I really appreciate outside. Um, so like a, a, the place has to have good infrastructure um, and it's probably not going to be a rural place, a super rural out in the sticks, super wild place that I'm going to be remote working for two months unless it has a really good setup. Um, that's probably just not gonna be in the cards for me over the next year to two, considering my work life. But I will intentionally do those um, when I'm taking time to fully go offline on vacation, if that makes sense. Yeah, I Thank can- Thank you so much, um, Yeah, I can go next. Um, so for trip planning, um, this one I'll probably keep super short. Um, how do I choose my destinations? Uh, actually, it usually comes from like other people. Like when I'm meeting people in one location, they're like, oh, I went to this place and uh, it's on my list next. Um, and then there have been some other places that uh, are like not typical digital nomad destinations, like London being one of them, but I had some ties there because we lived there as a baby. And then from there, I went to Scotland, which was extremely special to me. Um, and I also lived there as a baby. Um, and Scotland is amazing, but you probably won't meet other nomads there. Um, and then um, how long do I stay typically? Um, I've done like longer stints in some places, uh, but uh, sometimes I just want to like experience like everything really fast. So I'll like try to squeeze everything in, in like three to four days or maybe a week. Um, my trip in Latin America was like that um, back in January, February, I did Costa Rica, Nicaragua and Colombia. Um, and I just did everything super fast. Um, and considerations I take when booking a spot, um, I am not a hostel person. Um, I can't do it. <laughs> I've never stayed in a hostel before. Um, cause like, I'm just really picky about, um, clean bathrooms. I don't like to share bathrooms with people, which is why outside is great. I will always pick the room as a private bathroom. Um, <laughs> and I, yeah, and I have, um, long-term, uh, like gastro issues that I've got to take care of. Um, and I'm also a vegetarian, so I need a place where I can cook. 
So I will try to get a studio with a kitchen if I can, unless I'm staying somewhere for just a night. Um, I am browsing booking.com and Airbnb constantly um, mm -hmm. to find those places. Uh, so yeah. Thank you so much, Pierre. I love that. I'm the studio girl too. Like I, I like to have my own place where I can cook and just have my own space. So I do look for that. And that's what I love about <clears throat> outside. Um, planning stuff for me is just completely right now. I mean, it might change as I get used to this lifestyle, but it's for me, it's just whatever happens next or what's, it's, it's not planned. It's, um, it's very on a whim, depending on uh, circumstances. And I, I quite like that. Um, I think the outside, outside has given me the confidence to do that because you know that where you're going, there's going to be a level of um, you're going to be taken care in a certain way. You know, like even coming to somewhere like Marrakesh, I've never been here, and uh, I just I trusted that I, it would be fine, um, and it was. It was. It was. It was wonderful. So um, I personally, again, I think this is wildly personal. So and it different stages of life or according to your work or what you're doing is different but I am craving and needing to be in one place for a little longer than a week or two at the moment so um, longer term stays for me have been good like sort of and for, for me that means more than sort of two weeks so three to four weeks or actually in the end feels like a lifetime you know I think back I've been running a pilot program for my startup and we began, I began it in outside in Venice three months ago. And I think, oh my gosh, like I've been in three different countries since then, delivering it from three different places. I never imagined, I, I planned to be in LA the entire time um, and then life just didn't unfold that way. So um, long-term for me is like three or four weeks, but that feels like a good enough amount of time to set up your space and kind of create your own version of home um, so a really interesting thing for me as I've been um, embarking on this journey is what what how do, how do you feel at home in a place so I it's kind of funny but um, you know I travel with a few key things that you can maybe see some of them like I don't know if you can see in the background that's my bed but there's some picture frames behind me like so the minute I get into any space I put up my pictures um, and I have certain things that I just set up that makes it feel like home for me and that's been really important just finding that sort of internal sense of home that there's a few little physical items that contribute to that but then also it's a mindset um, and, and that initially was the biggest challenge for me was you know on the road doing this kind of thing which is exciting and like to others looks very um, exotic and fun and amazing but actually it's quite challenging and there's um, especially for kind of a, a sensitive soul uh, of which I am like you there's this little things that I've needed to practice or do or be day to day to feel okay um, and, and that's a learning process I'm getting better at it I'm, I'm guessing in a year's time I'll be like a master at it um, and I, I really I, like I, oh, sorry so go on now no I was just gonna say I really like what you said about like um you know, you, you you crave different types of tri trips at different points in your life. You know, sometimes yeah. you feel the need to ground yourself and be in one place um, and other times you want to, you know, see as much as possible. Um, and mm -hmm. I think it can just depend on where you're at um, and kind of where, where, where you are emotionally, physically, mentally um, as to how you plan your trips and having some flexibility, mm -hmm. but also being um, a little bit more structured, I think is important. Agreed. Um, yeah, 100% um thank you so much everybody um i'm gonna move on to um kind of logistics this is this is more just sort of like kind of some some silly stuff um around how you pack um but also just like more logistical stuff um if you can share any tips that you have with people um around travel insurance um visas that kind of stuff um you're not gonna you may not want to speak to all of this um but if you have some good resources ideas on this that would be amazing but i but i'd love you just to cover those um initial ones around packing because uh you know it's always a question <laughs> that is always a question i find myself asking every single female nomad that i know <laughs> i feel like i'm always asking like you know what do you do for what how many suitcases do you bring with you because i've tried to <laughs> 
Um, just to quickly touch on Belle's uh, question about Wi-Fi connection, such a good question. I feel like you just kind of have to like, it, it, it. In the beginning of my nomad journey, um, I went through a couple trips, like trips with groups that are that last about a month where Wi-Fi was not good and it caused a lot of stress for me. And I've gotten to the point where I if it doesn't have good Wi-Fi, I just can't do it. So mm -hmm. I try to find places to stay, like an outside, or even if even if outside's not in the place you you want to go, like when you're looking at Airbnbs, reach out to the host and ask them for speed tests. Ask them to like send literally a URL to them. There's one that's called OKLA, OKLA speed test, where they can just go to it on their URL, run it, and then they can screenshot the results to you, which will show you the speed of download and the speed of upload. And then that way, you know, like if it's anything less than for me, because of the bandwidth that my work requires, if it's anything less than like 15, it's probably not going to be doable. Um, so I, I guess, long story short, my message would be like, don't just go passively thinking that it's going to be available or passively thinking that it's going to be solid. Cause especially if you have work like mine, you cannot not have solid, stable internet. Like, and if you don't, it's a real problem. Um, you just you can't assume that I think as an American, that's something I've taken for granted. Um, so yeah, I, I don't travel with pocket Wi-Fi. I do know of a couple, uh, like nomads that do, um, what I do is I download eSIMs to my phone and I will hotspot off of my phone. Now that won't always work because sometimes eSIM providers will throttle you if they can tell that you are like hotspotting. If you are like literally on a Zoom call and you're hotspotting off of your phone on an eSIM that you download onto your phone, chances are you will get throttled, but it's generally worked for me in the past. So like. Let's say I'm um, in, uh, I don't know, like the middle of France and the Wi-Fi at my Airbnb goes down or it's being spotty. I can go on to, uh, there's this app called uh, Idolo, A-I-R-A-L-O, uh, where you can download eSIM, eSIM onto your iPhone and then just switch your service to that so that you can start hotspotting off of that. Um, so I use that as a backup my main uh, kind of system for my phone doesn't allow for me to hotspot anymore, unfortunately, off of my actual phone service because I switched to Google Fi. Most people I do know who Nomad switched to Google Fi because you pay one flat fee for international talk text and data, but that also comes with limitations too, where uh, they started booting people if they can tell you're out of the country, out of the US for extended periods of time, and you can only activate it from within the US. So like, the longer you get, you, you are doing this type of life, I think you start to realize that it's something you kind of always have to be thinking about, always be in the back of your mind. Um, and at least for me, for my work, I can't just, I can't just assume that it's always going to be a given, um, but I do think that's why outside is helpful because I've been to, I think two outsides now, the one in Madeira in Portugal, and then the one in Hollywood and like it, it, Wi-Fi has never been an issue. And if something's wrong, like it's immediately fixed. And that takes a huge piece of like brain space off of my plate that I don't have to think about. Um, but I think I have heard of people using pocket Wi-Fi. I just haven't used it because I feel like as long as I have my phone um, and I have eSIMs, that usually kind of serves the purpose uh, for me. So yeah, I don't know if anyone else wants to touch on that. Uh, I do have some comments on the logistics slide here. And just to jump in guys, I'm very conscious of time. So um, I maybe choose a couple of the questions that you really want to speak to. And then, because we've got a section on community that I want to make sure um, we cover a little bit. Um, so yeah, go. <laughs> yeah, I can oh. go next. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, I'll just pick a couple of questions. Um, I think Christina already talked to the internet piece. Um, so, uh, I will talk about the luggage situation. I am carry-on only. Um, and I've tried so many different variations of this. Um, oh God, I forgot that. Oh, it's a company called Pact. They make this like huge backpack um, with like a clamshell opening and all these compartments. Um, and uh, I was using that for um, a couple of my trips where um, I stuffed everything in there. There's even a sleeve for my laptop. Um, and one of the most necessary items, um, especially if you're like me and you love like 
carrying lots of different outfits and things and shoes and whatever. Um, I carry packing cubes, which are amazing. Um, and I'm sure like the rest of you have already discovered these, like you can stuff so much of your clothing in your suitcase or your backpack if you've got packing cubes. Um, it just makes like everything super organized and you know it, it compresses everything. Um, it's pretty genius. Um, and then my most unnecessary but necessary item is uh, coconut oil. Um, I can't always carry it if um, I'm doing carry on because it's a liquid and they don't send it, they don't like sell it in like little um, travel size packs, but I'll put it in a travel size like bottle if I can. Um, it's just uh, super important for my hair <laughs> and my skin um, because uh, when you're flying all the time or even just traveling on the bus or, or whatever, like, you know, exposure to AC, um, like your skin and your hair will dry out. And it's amazing for removing um, uh, makeup and uh, it's just amazing. You should all carry coconut oil. It's just an old Indian um, beauty trick. I I think it's really the only thing you need for your skin. Um, how do I fund travels? Um, I It's basically just, you know, I, I work remotely. I am very lucky to be working for a tech company. Um, so uh, that makes it a lot easier. Um, and also I don't pay rent because I live with my parents. They're, they've been amazing about um, just letting me stay with them while I go through this phase of my life. Yeah. Amazing. I am... Um... I was carry on forever. And then my, my beautiful mom, who I love so very much, last time I was in Perth, I was, I was home briefly. She was like, I'm gonna buy you a proper like um, suitcase, like this massive suitcase that bas I'm a small person. I could basically like climb into the suitcase and it, it's been the most annoying thing ever. So the, the uh, undercarriage suitcase for me doesn't work. So I'm going to go straight back to carry on. So that's one tip. The other thing I'll say, I travel with a lot of shoes as well. I'm, a, I'm very about my heels. And um, one tip is like how much you can fit into shoes. So you use shoes in your suitcase as a place to put things like whether it's underwear or socks or things like stuff them in your shoes like they're they're a little compartment that you can you can use that was an amazing tip I got somewhere um and I'll keep it short because I know we're on time but I I just travel with this um it's an American thing I don't know where you get it from um but Jacob Jacobson salt I don't know if you know that now it's like this amazing salt and I just, uh, it's so delicious and I take it everywhere and just put it on my eggs and everything. It's like my little, one of those little things that makes me feel like I'm home. So I think little things like that. That's so funny. Great. I used to, used to travel with like a little thing of molds and sea salt, like a little yeah. container. <laughs> um, it's just, yeah. yeah, it's great. It just makes you, yeah, it makes you feel like you're at home. Christina, what's the most unnecessary but completely necessary item you travel with? A what? <laughs> I was just thinking, oh gosh, um, it's probably like an unnecessary amount of skincare. I've always been somebody who's been with skincare. I used to work for spas before I went into the tech industry. Um, I just find that my skin freaks out in different places I'm in based off of like how much stress I'm in and my eating habits will always change based on the country I'm in. Um, and so my skin always freaks out as, as a response. And so I, I can, I just won't travel without, um, good skincare. I tried going uh, carry on only essentially for the last seven months, which I love. It's a breeze going through the airport that I'm probably going to switch back to uh, uh, check in with like a carry on um, because I just can't not have my, uh, my, my skincare with me. Uh, that's something that I love to do as a ritual during the night. Like if I've had a long day of being in Zoom calls all day, I'll do like a mask and like a whole routine. Um, and after going through the horrors of having to throw away half of my cosmetics bag in Denmark, uh, going through TSA and also in Milan, I will never <laughs> travel without a check-in again for that particular reason. That's basically the reason, right? It's to have liquids. Yeah. Otherwise you could probably yeah. cram enough stuff into carry exactly. on that it would be That's okay. <laughs> um, this is our kind of, um, there's another section, but I know that we're, um, and there's always so much to cover um, and it's really amazing. So it's okay that we don't cover everything. Um, but community is something I wanted to touch on um, before we finish. And for anyone that needs to hop off, know that um, this is being recorded. Um, so we will post a follow up so that you can um, see the whole thing again um, and, and catch anything that you missed. Um, 
so thank you for those of you that do need to jump off and thank you for coming and um, we really appreciate it um, but anyone that wants to stay on for another five minutes or so um, please do we'd love that um I, a lot of this actually has been touched on um so if there's anything else you want to speak to around community but really like how you meet people um and if there's any communities that you'd end up you'd recommend joining um to make this process easier for people that are just starting out um, would be really helpful I can take this one. Um, so community, um, you know, the easy way to do it is to book at an app site, right? You are guaranteed <laughs> to find amazing people. Um, but uh, the other way to do it, th th I mean, outside is um, steadily expanding, right? They're not in every um, amazing digital nomad location just yet. Um, but uh, the other thing that I do is I make sure I look ahead, um, I look ahead of time for a co-working space. And I've made um, friends that way. Um, you go to a co-working space, you will find other solo travelers, um, someone to talk to, you'll find someone to do something with. Um, the other way that I do it, um, uh, outside isn't in Berlin, but it should totally be in Berlin. Um, when I was out there, I um, just, you know, got onto the Facebook Digital Nomads group. Like pretty much every um, Digital Nomad city has some sort of Facebook group. So just go ahead and look for it. Just, you know, type it in. Um, and someone had created a WhatsApp group. So I met some people through there. Um, so those are my two primary ways. I've also met some really nice people through tour groups. It's not my first choice for meeting people because sometimes like you just find tourists or families or couples and it's it's not ideal for meeting other solo travelers, but it is another way of doing it. Um, sometimes you just meet people on the street um, in a coffee shop. Like I think that digital like solo travelers know how to pick one another out. Um, and there is just sort of like a, you catch one another's eye. It's like, hey, you know, I'm Priya, et cetera, et cetera. I've made some friends that way as well. Um, so those are my uh, four main ways of uh, meeting people. Thank you so much. I'm um, still learning. Probably so have. I'm learning a lot from both of you, so thank you. <laughs> I think what, Priya, I, uh, what you said about um, being like um, picking out other solo travelers, I think is absolutely, um, you, when you're, well, particularly if you're in, an, in a country that there's a lot of travel going on, you, you tend to spot the people that um, are looking to connect. Um, and I think that, yeah, that's really helpful. I um, I would add, if you have hobbies, I know the last question here is about hobbies. Like if you're into, for example, over the last year, I've gotten into bachata and salsa dancing. That's a great way if you can, if, if you're in a city that has uh, a good bachata or salsa studio, that's a great way to meet people. You will oftentimes get added to like a WhatsApp group that uh does like uh dance socials and get together as groups like at different salsa clubs and stuff like that um i've met actually a, a fair amount of friends off of the airbnb experiences that i've done um i've had great uh great luck with that um and then the, the nomad travel groups that would plan chapters in different locations around the world so it's different from outside in the sense that like they do plan trips to different places um, that's where I've actually met most of my friends that I still travel with to this day. Um, I've actually found that as time has gone on, it's been a lot easier for me to feel like there's a sense of community around me. It still sometimes feels like it's hard to make deep connections with other nomads because people can be hard to pin down in general, as I can be. Um, but the more you travel and the more friends you kind of collect in like different places, I have just started getting to the point where I do feel like I have a real community and it's by all of these different things even some of the things that Priya mentioned um just kind of you know different amazing thank you so much um and then just a very quick sort of thing to end on just um what have your been your sort of highs and lows and top tips um and you can just uh, focus in on like one or two things that um, you think have been most challenging, um, your greatest highlights of doing this, of living this kind of, in, in this kind of way, um, and what one piece of advice you wish you'd been given. I wish I had been given the advice to do it sooner. <laughs> um, I think it's easy to just keep it kind of get into the day-to-day -day of living your life, whatever city you're living in. Um, like, especially because I had been working remotely for years before I started solo traveling. I 
probably should have done it sooner. Um, I think it's a good thing to put yourself out of your comfort zone frequently uh, and as much as you can, as long as you're being safe and aware of what you're putting yourself into. Um, and I would also say like, you don't need permission to do it. Just like it's an, the way I look at it is it's, it's an investment in myself, it's an investment in my future self, it's an investment in me as a friend, it's an investment in me as a future mom, because I really do think it changes you for the better. Um, so like for all those reasons, like just do it and like, it'll feel like a lot that you're jumping into, but the more you do it, like you realize it's doable and it's not as daunting as you think it might be. Um, the biggest challenge for me has been in solo traveling particularly has sometimes been the loneliness. Um, there have been times and they're, they're less frequent than I, than I, uh, less frequent than I would have anticipated. There are times when I've gone solo traveling before I knew of outside, before I would really start to try to cultivate places to meet people or go to dance class and stuff where I would feel kind of really alone. And I think the, the thing about that is while it sucks in the moment, those in, those feelings in and of itself are transformative experiences. So don't be afraid to feel alone sometimes. I have felt growth out of feeling those feelings. Um, that's the biggest challenge, but I would say the the biggest pro by far outweighs that, which is I've gained so many people in my life and so many experiences and so many learning lessons that have made me who I am today. Like the amount of serendipitous experiences and people that I've met, um, like all, all the people who are closest to me in my life besides family have all come from travel. I did not meet them in Denver. And I think that says a lot. And um, it far outweighs the times when occasionally I feel really lonely. So I, I would make this decision a hundred times over again to do all the trips I've done, even the ones where I didn't really meet any people and felt a little isolating. That's beautiful. Thank you, Christina. Yeah, um, I can take this next. Um, so actually, I was really glad to see um, this section on there too, because I, I also wanted to talk about the lows. Um, so I can remember that actually my um, my loneliest experience was in Edinburgh, Scotland, and that was um, just a year ago. Um, it was uh, um, it was like the third week of October, second and third week of October. So it was really cold. It was really rainy. Um, and you, we were just talking about the UK before um, the panel started. Um, and I was saying how I love the gloominess, but actually the gloominess in Edinburgh can really get you down. Um, it is kind of a depressing city, um, but like I had a lot of downtime to think about like the earlier parts of my trip, like I had had a very social experience in Portugal and England um, and Edinburgh is like, okay, now I get to like wind down and really think about like those experiences, all the people that I met um, and actually just get some rest. Um, but I will always look back on that as being like um, the part of my trip where I had to face some like really intense feelings. Um, and that can be, you know, really valuable too. I've had um, those experiences elsewhere um, where things just weren't um, what I expected sometimes. And like, you're going to go through that sometimes. Like the loneliness also can be um, just an opportunity to look at yourself, opportunity for growth. Um, and especially if you have a spiritual practice, like it can be a time for you to just, um, you know, find that extra time for meditation activities like that. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm really glad to see that portion of the panel as well. I think it's important to talk about that, you know, travel is not always going to be what you expect it to be, but um, it will, I think it will always give you like exactly what you need. Mm. I 100% I agree and just uh, probably want to just hone in on that point that how to how to manage loneliness, how to manage being in your own thoughts all the time and being in your own company all the time is really important. I think that's a really important skill for life in general. I think what you can learn from um, leading into that experience is huge and, and um, beneficial to all your relationships in general. Um, but it's not easy. It's difficult. There's there's low moments. There's lonely moments. There's moments where we're having some tools to, you know, deal with those moments is important. So I think the more that we could talk about that with each other as we all embark on this kind of experience, is the the better. So I'll leave it there. But it's really important. 
Um, I think this has a really been a really nice way to end. Um, I think it's, yeah, like you said, Priya, I think it's really important to talk about the challenges. Um, and then like, you, you know, it, 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 it's not all like what we see on Instagram, beautiful pictures, beautiful places. There are really hard times, um, but the growth that can come from that, um, I feel like Christina said, um, outweighs all of that. Um, the amount of new experiences that you get to have, the amount that you get to learn about yourself and others, um, the, the new perspectives it brings. Um, I think are, are why we do it. Um, and I cannot thank all three of you enough for sharing that with, with the panel today, with, with everybody today. Um, you guys are all an inspiration. Um, you have, you're, com you're coming from diff such different um, perspectives, but um, I feel like there's so much commonality in the things that you've said and, and the experiences that you've had. Thank you, um, really. Um, it's been really interesting listening to all of you. I can, yeah, um, I hope. Thanks for um, having us. Of course, of course. Um, I know we've run a bit over um, and I, um, so I want to wrap up, but I will do follow ups in the next few days and we have recorded this. If there are any questions um, that we haven't answered or things that people would like to follow up um, from people that have attended, please do get in touch. Um, I'm going to drop my email into the chat now, but on Member Hub, um, there's also the contact details for all of the panelists. Um, if you come through Eventbrite, um, you'll get an email from me and you can um, direct any questions to me and I can pass it on to the panelists as well. Um, but yeah, thank you all for joining and, and for, for listening with us today. Um, if, um, yeah, I'm just gonna drop something in the chat now. Was there anything anybody else wanted to end on um, before we log off? Um, please do. Okay, thank you so much. Um, thank you, Priya. Thank you, thank Claire. You. Thank you, Christina. Thank I hope to see you all in person at some point soon. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, take care, everybody. Right, take care, everyone. So Bye. Bye. Bye.